Hey, welcome back to Robinson Foundry. In today's video, I'll be turning this awesome 3D printed skull mask into solid bronze. This is a mask designed by Zane Rogers, and I think it's a great looking design, and it should make for a really cool bronze mask. To make it, I'll use a process called Lost PLA Metal Casting. To get started, I thinned out the original model to make it as light as possible, and then I 3D printed it in a plastic called PLA. When I thinned out the model on the computer, I made it a little bit too thin in a couple areas, which resulted in these holes. That's not a big deal though, because I can just patch it up with a little bit of wax. I also printed some pieces to act as a sprue and vents, which I glued into place with some hot glue. With that done, now I can start dipping the model into this liquid ceramic material called suspendislory to start creating a mold. Over the course of about a week, I built up a thick shell by dipping the model into the slurry about nine times. In between each layer except for the first, I coated the wet slurry with fused silica sand. This helps build up a thicker shell and it also adds some strength. Next I place the shell into my kiln to melt out the PLA plastic. I set the kiln to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the temperature at which the PLA plastic will start to flow out of the shell. Once most of it had flowed out of the shell, I removed it and then cranked the kiln up to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This turns the shell into a really durable ceramic which will withstand the heat of the molten bronze. For those of you who have been following my channel, you'll know that I've had problems in the past with shells cracking during the burnout. I think the reason I was running into so many problems with that is because I was using silica sand instead of fused silica sand. Ever since changing to fused silica, I haven't had any problems with cracks forming. While the shell was heating up, I started melting some bronze. Once the metal was completely melted and the shell was hot enough, I carefully removed the shell from the kiln and blew it out with some compressed air to remove any ash left behind. Then I carefully placed it into some sand to keep it stable as I poured in the bronze. I wasn't able to break open this mold until the next day, so I just set up the camera and filmed it cracking as it was cooling down. It's really interesting to watch and listen to these ceramic shells as they cool. They crack and make loud pinging sounds and sometimes spit out little chunks of ceramic. Well aside from a little shrinkage here and there, which I really didn't expect, it turned out really nice. Now I can move on to removing the rest of the shell with my sand blaster.
After removing the sprue and vents, I needed to get rid of the excess metal, and the best way to do that was with a burr and a die grinder. So I got the sprue and the vents cut off, and now I have to figure out a way to attach this thing to my face. I did try some paracord and I strung it through these holes, but that just pushed it up against my nose awkwardly and uh, it just didn't work. It wasn't comfortable at all. This thing's three pounds, so it's never going to be comfortable, but I think I can do better than that. My plan is to glue a couple strips of leather here and that way I'll have a strap coming off this way and this way and hopefully that'll allow it to push up against my face evenly. Before I started gluing anything to the mask, I cleaned it up with the die grinder. I used an abrasive wheel to clean up the inside, and then for the outside, I used a wire brush. There's a lot of intricate detail here, so it wasn't really possible to clean it up any other way, and the wire brush worked really well. Once I was done with that, I darkened the whole thing with some liver of sulfur. Liver of sulfur is pretty interesting. It comes in these little chunks that you dissolve in water, and it'll create a dark patina on uh, copper alloys. After washing it off, now I can remove the dark patina from all the high spots, which reveals all the intricate detail in the design and really brings the mask to life. I sketched out where I thought the strap should go, and then I cut it out to use as a template. This probably isn't the best leather, it's a bit too thin, but it's what I had laying around, so that's what I used. These ended up being a little bit too short, so I made some longer ones. To glue them in place, I used this E6000, which I know will work well, but it takes a long time to dry. So I also used some 5 minute epoxy around the perimeter to hold it in place while the glue sets. Well, I got these leather straps glued into place, and I gotta say, despite my best effort, I just don't think this is gonna work out. I tried putting it on and tying these straps, and it's just way too heavy and it pulls away from my face. So maybe if I had a much more complex harness system, it would work, something similar to how these attach. But uh, it's all right, I'm just gonna chalk it up as a bit of a learning experience. And in the future, when I make more of these, I'm gonna make sure that they're a lot thinner and a lot lighter. As a final step, I'm gonna coat it with a product called Protect-A-Clear, and that'll just keep it from corroding any further, and it'll also bring out the color of the darker areas a lot more. You'll see what I mean. I'm very happy with how this turned out regardless of it being too heavy to wear. It's a really cool design and it'll make a great addition to my collection. If you'd like to follow along with these projects and help to support the channel, then consider joining my Patreon. I post multiple Patreon-only posts a week there and you'll also gain access to any of my 3D printing files. And please make sure to check out Zane Rogers' work by following the links in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future projects.